So we are continuing this series that we've been doing on the Ten Commandments, and I'm excited to continue this and talk about the Fourth Commandment, which comes from Exodus 28 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. So join me on this episode of the Methodical Methodist Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Methodical Methodist Podcast a podcast where we talk about why the church is still relevant for us today as we explore themes connected to religion, politics, pop culture, faith, and yes, even the church. Together, we can find out what it means to live into the mission of the church by making disciples. Now, let's get methodical. Hello, everyone. I am your host, the Reverend Andrew Lay, and I'm excited to spend this time on the podcast today. If you like this show, I hope that you might take a minute to subscribe, rate, and write a review for the podcast. It helps to boost the show and make it to where more people can find it. You can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash methodicalpod, and you can find me on Instagram as well at methodicalpod. So be sure to check me out. The word Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word, which means to cease or to rest. The fourth commandment, I think, is really one of the more challenging commandments because oftentimes we have a hard time stopping and resting. I was at a clergy meeting a few years ago, and my district superintendent asked all the pastors in our district, what is a commandment that pastors break the most often? Immediately, one of the other pastors shouted out, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Everybody in the room kind of chuckled. You know, pastors have been known to bend or break this commandment from time to time. But the truth is, not just pastors struggle with this. I think this is something that everybody struggles with. Americans work harder and longer than ever before. We spend more hours at work than most countries. I once read an article about former Google executive and Yahoo CEO Marissa Mayer. She's known for her strong work ethic. She has regularly pulled off all-nighters during her time at Google and even worked from her hospital bed shortly after giving birth to her twins. She has been called the hardest-working CEO in Silicon Valley, bar none. In this article, she shares details about her 130-hour work week. She says, I am strategic about when I sleep, when I shower, when I eat, and how often I go to the bathroom. She goes on to say the nap rooms at Google were there because it was safer to stay in the office than walk to your car at 3 a.m. For my first five years, I did at least one all-nighter a week, except when I was on vacation, and the vacations were few and far between. When I heard this story, I was completely shocked. I did the math. And 130 hours a week is almost five straight days nonstop. It is no surprise that working this much can be extremely dangerous and damaging. Studies have shown that productivity actually plummets after 40 hours of work a week. Our bodies were not created to work 130 hours. Too much work has been proven to increase depression anxiety, and cause a number of serious health issues. But I also can't help think how working this much might affect your family, friends, and especially your children. So this is an extreme example. Maybe you don't work that much. I hope that you don't work that much. But chances are you sometimes have a hard time taking a Sabbath. We often have a hard time stopping We are busy. We have a lot to do. There is a lot on our plates. And we fall into this trap of busyness that leaves us feeling tired, hopeless, stressed, and burned out. In this story, Mayer is bragging about her strong work ethic and working so much each week. And a lot of people champion this kind of work ethic. The fourth commandment is really countercultural. 
don't get me wrong, work is good, but you can have too much of a good thing. You can be overworked. For some reason, our society often thinks that rest is connected with weakness or laziness. The last thing I want is for people to think that I'm weak or lazy. A lot of people want to show off that they can do it all. They want to be the employee of the month and the parent of the year. They don't want people to think that they need a break or that they need to stop. But God gives us this commandment for a reason. Moses first gave this commandment to the people of Israel who had worked for years as slaves in Egypt. They were used to spending hours working because they had no other choice. I mean, they were slaves. They were forced to work. When God freed them from slavery, they were able to work at their own discretion. They were able to work when they wanted to and actually benefit from their own work. I have to imagine that it took some time for them to get used to this new freedom. It probably took a while for them to realize that free people can take some time off. So Moses offers this commandment to the people saying, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and consecrated it. In this commandment, God institutes a holy day of rest. As one scholar points out, common sense would tell us that we make something holy by working hard. We think that this is something that we must work and strive to achieve. This commandment is illogical because it suggests that we make a day holy by doing nothing, by resting. Again, this is completely countercultural, but this is something that God instituted from the very beginning. We're told in the book of Genesis, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The Sabbath was created by God for us. It was meant to be a way for us to slow down, relax, reflect, and rest. As human beings, God realized that we need this time to stop every now and then. We cannot keep going 100% all of the time. And so we need to stop and rest. A few years ago, I was uh, talking to a pastor who was telling me about how he used to never take any breaks. He would go years without taking a vacation. And he said finally he couldn't take it anymore. His wife couldn't take it anymore. So they went on a vacation to England, and they spent two weeks there. And he said he preached a sermon when he returned, and all these people in the congregation came up to him afterwards and said, that was the best sermon you have ever preached. And he credits it all to taking that break. He said he needed that break, and the congregation could tell a difference after he had taken advantage of that time to get away from the pulpit. What I find interesting is that we don't often take the Sabbath seriously enough, and the Pharisees during Jesus' life took the Sabbath too seriously. The Pharisees used this commandment to make themselves seem more important and holier than thou, They used it to shame and control people. This rule was no longer used the way it was intended, but it had become a burden. In Jesus' day, there were thousands of things that a person could not do on the Sabbath. And some of these rules seem absolutely ridiculous. For example, a person with a toothache couldn't gargle with vinegar, but could use a toothbrush dipped in vinegar. A radish could be dipped in salt, but not left too long in the salt because then it would start to pickle, which is not allowed. You're not allowed to kindle a fire, which is good because you're also not allowed to extinguish a fire. 
In contrast, the following activities are actually encouraged on the Sabbath. You are allowed to spend the Sabbath together with your own immediate family. You could attend temple for prayers. You could visit family and friends within walking distance. You could host guests. You could sing special songs for the Sabbath, read, study, and discuss the Torah. But these rules became so rigid that they actually became oppressive. You know, we, we sometimes take these rules too far. This makes me think of a story in the Gospels where Jesus and his disciples are walking through the fields and picking off grain to eat. The Pharisees see this happen and they say, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And Jesus says, Hey, have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which was not lawful for him or for his companions to eat, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law that the, on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple break the Sabbath, and yet they are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So Jesus explains the importance and true meaning of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is meant to meet the needs of people. It's not meant to be a burden. Marva Don sums up this idea best by saying, Sabbath keeping is not a law. God told us to keep the Sabbath holy, not because God wanted to spoil our fun, but because God wanted to deepen our joy. God wanted us to learn to rest. And in this busy culture, what more important lesson could we learn today? Six days you must work, but on the seventh day, you have the freedom or privilege of resting. In other words, Sabbath keeping is not so much a law as it is a gift. We sometimes forget this gift that has been given to us. This commandment calls us to remember the Sabbath. One way to remember the Sabbath is to observe the Sabbath. And when we observe the Sabbath, we keep the Sabbath. And when we do this, it shouldn't be rigid, but it should be flexible. In his book, The Pastor, Eugene Peterson talks about being overworked and not having a lot of time for his family. And so he and his wife decide to have a Sabbath every Monday after a busy day of worship on Sunday. They would drive out to the country, read a psalm, hike in silence for a couple hours, and then enjoy a quiet evening at home. This was a weekly observance that allowed them to take a break from work, to rest, and to relax. What strikes me about Eugene Peterson's Sabbath time is that he and his wife spent time in worship. They would read a psalm which rooted their day. There's an element of rest, but there's also an element of worship that is included in observing the Sabbath. They made this day special. They set it apart from the other days of the week. I think God calls us to make the Sabbath special and important. The Sabbath does not necessarily have to be on Sunday morning at church. It can be a hike that you take with your family. It can be going and doing things that you love and enjoy. It can be in the evenings when you unplug your phones and your computers and televisions. I'm kind of trying to get into the practice of of doing that at the end of the day, kind of putting my phone away and, and turning it off, and getting away from some of my electronic devices and the emails and things like that. Because Sabbath is meant to be a special time for us to rest. And it's a special time for us also to enter into worship. And so when we rest in the proper way, it connects us, hopefully, closer to God. In fact, we become more like God when we rest. After all, God rested on the seventh day. God took a break from all the work that he was doing in order to stop and enjoy the creation that he had made. God created this commandment so that we could stop, worship, and enjoy this gift of life that we have been given. So may we find ways to remember the Sabbath 
And may we take time to be holy. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Methodical Methodist Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, I hope you might consider heading on over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review of the show. It is very much appreciated. And until next time, stay methodical.